Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today we're gonna watch my boyfriend play golf and his friend at Stonewall Course. I think that's what it's called. Okay, so not sure what's going on here. I think this is just like the practice part, but I don't know when they actually start. Okay, right, so this is the first hole. And it's raining outside, as you can tell. I ball was a lot closer. Um, That's okay, my ball is like 20 yards behind him. Okay, that was not even close. It's like really far off, but <laughs> okay. Now it's Kyle's turn, and Kyle is closer. And he almost got it in, and then he gets it in. So now it's Kyle's turn again, and. Kyle does not get it in, but he's very close. Oh, all right, guys, nothing like a little three putt par or bogey, whatever. Okay. okay, now we're on to hole two. So that looks really good, I think. It looks like it went really far. That looks like it went in the trees. I'm not sure if that was Probably intentional. Is it good? I, I can't see it. Okay. Sweet. Alright. Oh! Yeah, that's better than I thought. Okay, good. Oh, wait. Or did he not actually hit it? Oh, never mind. I thought he did. Okay, there you go. I think that was good. Look at that. We're even, dude. Oop. Topped it. I'll walk up there, grab a wedge. So I think that's just like a practice swing. And then he like actually hits it this time. And yeah, I think that was good. And my cat is being so annoying right now. And she's like making really weird noises. Oh my gosh, Linda, get off the AC. Oh my gosh. Luna, stop. Okay, well, truthfully, um, this video is a little long for my liking because I don't really do golf video voiceovers. Um, but yeah, you guys should subscribe to my boyfriend's channel and yeah, give this video a thumbs up and turn those notifications on. Okay, thanks guys. Bye. Alright, I'm just going to keep Rachel's voice in here. She really wanted to do it, and it's been weeks since I've looked at this video, but continuing on, I end up hitting this putt, and we get out of here, I believe, with a bogey. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Par 5. Oh, yeah, okay, so I absolutely smoke my drive here, and... I remember sitting here on the fairway just thinking like please do not top my three wood that was the biggest thought here I was like whatever I do don't top my three wood I actually hit a pretty good shot here a uh, little pulley um, not where I wanted to miss there's trees on the right and I actually get stuck in a pretty hard situation here 
All right, guys. Well, I don't have a really fun shot here, so um, I might need to grab my feet away. We'll just. So it's a pretty bad strike, but it ends up working out. That sucked. <laughs> because I didn't go too far. I was able to just punt this here. And the camera doesn't really do this much justice, but there was probably five, five, seven feet left here. Kyle had a pretty long lag putt here as well. And we make the putt for par and we move on to the next hole. Oof. So, I remember we got up to this tee box and it wasn't like pouring too hard, but as soon as we got up to this tee box, it starts pouring on us and I can barely hold the club I just honestly I topped it a little bit here hit a pretty okay shot uh, pulled it I don't know when we played this round I kind of I was either thinning my shots or pulling them uh, don't really know what that was about but we leave ourselves a pretty hard shot in the bunker. We're on like the back edge and we have some room to work with and I think this would have been like a really good shot but I end up hitting the front of the fridge and it like speed boosts off. Here I tried to zoom in the best I could. Not really showing much justice but it's probably a 15 footer here. And we tap in for, I believe, I think I hit a six on that hole. Get through, get through. Holy tracer. Yeah, so we got a six on that hole. Okay, so on that last shot, I actually thinned my pitching wedge a little bit. I think I had like 130-ish, and I ended up on the back side of the green. We had like, this was a monster putt. And I want to say, you can't really tell here, but I think I left myself like, or five feet that's why I actually mark it and then trying to line my putt and I miss this one I want to say yeah the rain started picking up again it was a really weird round because the rain just was like off and on and it was just pouring. Here I think I just slipped out, which is unfortunate. Kyle puts another ball in the fairway. I think on this one, I leak out to the left a little bit, but overall, I mean, I think I'm still in the fairway. Might 
necessarily in the fairway, but that'd be fun. Yeah, I ended up just on the left side of the fairway. Nothing like a fat six iron. Oh, so this is actually a par five, and I just absolutely fat the six iron. And then here, I, I think when you play around and you start hitting fat, like all right, you start to hold the club on a little bit longer. And when you start to do that, you actually cause you to like hit thin more than you would think. Um, yeah, my sequencing in this round was just pretty bad overall. A lot of long putts. The other hard part with putting when it's raining and then it gets sunny is the greens kind of dry out and they get a little bit faster and then it rains and it gets a little bit slower. Here we actually hit a pretty decent 7 iron. Um, I mean I I pretty much picked this ball but I leave myself about 12 feet for birdie. I think this camera angle actually gets a pretty, pretty good angle. Oh. Okay, so yeah, it's probably like 12 feet. And we put that in the heart of the cup. It's not often that we get get a birdie or take one back, but when we do, we got to take our small victories. Right around this hole, I believe it kind of start stops raining a little bit. It doesn't look as bad uh, as like that par three where it was absolutely just pouring on us, but. We hit a okay drive, it leaked out to the left. And then here we actually put a pretty decent strike on it. I've noticed out of the rough I have a tendency to either top the ball or I hit it pretty pretty square. It's like no in between for me. It's either a top or I hit it pretty square. Here's another instance of that, what I was talking about, where the green just kind of gets a little bit faster when it dries out. Um, I mean, it looks like it's still sprinkling, but there was probably a solid 5-10 minutes because we were waiting for the people to leave. And if you're like me where you slice the ball, you've definitely been in a situation like this where you're just Something begging higher, for the ball to hold on. Uh, you can see how bad a strike that was too. And what we can do... I don't think the camera angle really picks us up that well, but... I mean, this slope is pretty, uh... Pretty big. And my... I knew it was the ball was going to draw here, so I aimed out a little bit more left, and yeah, I ended up hitting the tree. All right, how far do I got? And to me, it's all fun and games. Like, I'm not out there playing for millions of dollars, so I'm going to hit a tree every once in a while, and not it good. is what it is. We have a 55 yarder here. So from this lie, the ball was actually sitting a little bit like deeper than it looks. Um, 
the shot was really good. Um, I mean, right, it rolled out a little bit more, but I don't think I could have gotten much more spin with how wet it was. Uh, but I mean, I put it to within 10 feet. And I believe I actually got out of that hole with a bogey. So if I didn't hit the tree and just played a little bit smarter of a shot there, I think I could have actually parred the hole. Yeah, even Kyle was getting pretty frustrated with these greens, but we finished the back or the front nine with plus nine, plus eight. So not the best, not the worst. Here we hit another spinny fade. Uh, we end up being right in the middle of the fairway, but we had about a 10-15 minute wait. And then another 10-15 to 15 minute wait. The group in front of us were just playing really slow. And there it is, another absolute thin shot. We put it in a greenside bunker and we actually hit a really nice bunker shot out uh, it doesn't roll out as much as we would like it to but I at least have a putt to try and save par here and we read the putt really well so we end up saving par here and we move on to the next hole So all day I had been kind of playing pretty good size fade and there's nothing worse when you put a ball in the fairway and have like inside of a hundred and you just absolutely hit it super chunky. Um, that always sucks but here I tried to play like a bump and run pitching wedge and maybe 30 yards and the ball just did not stop. So we left ourselves a really long putt here, uh, probably over 30 feet. And then we just absolutely leave that short. Sort of just the story of today with being inside of 100 yards, missing shots, yeah. you. Just tell I'm frustrated here. On this part three, we hit a pretty decent shot. It's just a little short. And I try to get cute with it and try and play like a higher flop shot. And I just kind of put a little bit too much sauce on it. So we have a long putt, and the lag's not too bad, but it rolls out a little bit further than we like to, and I believe I missed this putt. And usually when I uh, start to get pretty irritated or I'm just frustrated with my game, I don't mark my ball and make sure I treat each putt like it matters. And right there, I miss a pretty easy putt. Um, that's another thing that I notice with my game is when I start getting annoyed, I just kind of break down and stop doing the things. Um, that you should do before each shot, but I know we've all been there.
Kyle hits a pretty good shot here. He ends up landing kind of short on the fairway, but at least he's in the fairway. I have to hit a second shot here because I absolutely just sliced it straight left. And it's actually water straight left by those trees. Here we hit a really good three wood. Um, it actually goes out a little bit left, but I'm still in the fairway at about 75 yards. Um, pretty decent shot here. It does go a little bit longer than I would like to, and I end up just on the back side of the green. And then here. I I debated whether I should chip or putt it, but it was kind of like on that in-between rough and fringe, uh, and I didn't want my putter to get snagged on it, so I elected to just chip it, and it looked like a, a pretty good line, but it just went out a little bit further. But we managed to sink the putt, and it really sucks when you go OB on a par 5, because if you end up getting a 5, it's like, okay, cool, automatic double bogey with that uh, two-stroke penalty. I believe this is just the stretch where I continuously am fighting for par or something happens where I lose a ball, I have to take a drop. <laughs> and yep, just letting my emotions ride there. And then just really not giving any good effort here. I think this was probably it, the part in the round where Kyle and I were just really done and on this hole in particular we were waiting 15 minutes for the group in front of us to basically find their ball and get through so I actually I hit what felt like a really good drive and I was like oh I thought it was good but I've never played this course and I didn't realize to the left that it actually was like little valley here but we top a shot cuz I uh, basically I didn't say down through the ball and I thought I could muscle a wedge up there instead of just trying to get it out into play I think if we were playing smart golf we try and just get the ball out of the rough and into a fringe area towards the left and then we can chip on and try and putt from there but we basically do the same thing, and I think we get out with double bogey. <coughs> yeah, I think we've all been in a situation where we want to break a club and there I I was like ah oh, well I'm gonna try and play hybrid and then we're just not aligning putts I think this hole we were Kyle and I were really watching the group in front of us and this is where we saw so the next hole is a par three and the group in front of us they're playing from a set of combo tees so it's basically between white and the red and we see that they're playing drivers on a par 3 over water uh... yeah gets pretty annoying when you see that and you have to wait 10-15 minutes for these guys to you know play driver on par 3's 
in my opinion, if you're doing that, your group probably should be playing best ball or play the very front tee so you can actually hit an iron into a green. Um, that's just my opinion, but it is what it is. This is a, a Sunday round, so I guess I can't expect too much, but this was a pretty good uh, par 3. We missed left, go into the bunker, and then hit a sub. I mean, we get the ball out of the bunker, but that putt really was awesome. Here we hit a little bit bigger of a fade than we would have liked. Uh, caught it high on the face, didn't get all of it, but the ball still well went out pretty pretty good distance. And then here I absolutely hit a stinger of a three wood. I caught it pretty low on the face. I was lifting up. Uh, I was kind of scared of topping uh, it, and I was actually set, sitting oh, there for like again. 30 seconds oh, over the ball, and Kyle was like, Let's get it. afterwards, he was like, are you going to hit the ball? Here, I just yep. dumped the That's duff. The and this is actually what we wanted to do the first time. We would have had a pretty decent look for birdie. And then that was actually Kyle's eagle putt. Um, and then he just gets up and walk, like knocks in a seven footer for birdie. Doesn't even align it anything. Here we need this for, I believe, par. I sat on the chip and I was like, "Yeah, this this should be my par putt." Um, what's that? 72 plus 19, that's a 91. So with a birdie, I would have hit 90. And as you see, we actually hit a really, really good putt. Just I deserve that. lipped out, and we end the round with a 92. I deserve that. Good round. I deserve that. After duffing it, yep.